Okay, let's take a look at this program, Embed OS 6 Lab 2C. Program again uses our clear and position functions. And what we're doing is a positioning cursor, printing out a message, input first number, scanning that first number, positioning again, inputting our second number and grabbing it with a scanf. We're going to then calculate answer one with num1 ended with num2 bitwise and num1 ORD with NUM2 bitwise for answer 2. And finally, answer 3 is going to be NUM1 exclusive ORD with NUM2 bitwise. And then we're going to put out our values in a hex format. Let's see how that works by hitting our run button here. Now, as we're running it, it's saying input our first number. We're going to click on the screen and type AB, second number CD, and I'm going to see these values coming up here. Now, with a PC calculator, down here, I can bring that up and we can do the same kind of calculations here. We can go to hex here and we can type in AB and we go down here to bitwise and that with our number here CD and we get an answer here of 89, which is exactly what we've got here. Let's take a look at the next one. If we clear this, we have AB again and this time we're going to bitwise or it with CD. And we're going to get again an answer here of EF, which it's showing us here. Then finally, let's take a look at the last one here, AB and exclusive board with CD. And we get the answer here of 66, which is exactly what we've got here. So there's no surprises there, but there will be surprises when we start taking a look at debugging this and seeing these numbers show up in our register. So let's take a look at that next. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go over here and we're going to then just click on debug and then start the debug session. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is put in here a breakpoint and I wanna put it on line 17, but watch what happens when I try clicking on 17. It doesn't go there. So any line such as even 15, it's gonna drop down here. Now I want to basically set a breakpoint here and go through the clear function, but I know that the function definition is down here, so I can actually set a breakpoint on line 48. Now the other thing I want to do also is once we get down here, when we get to answers, I want to set a breakpoint on line 28 as well. So now that I've done that, let's just run our code and see what happens. And right now we're at this print left score bracket 2j with the escape sequence. And if we go and look at that, it's printed, but nothing's happened on our screen again, which we expect not to until we do the F flush. And the F flush does it clean. And if we go on to the next step, we're at the position. And if we step into this, we can see it's passing in 1, 1 here. So this is going to be the same thing as we get to the next line here of escape plus score bracket 1, semicolon 1, capital H as before. But again, just printing F doesn't do anything on the screen. We have to do is F flush. And now we're in the left-hand column at the top. Now if we run here, it's going to ask us for our first number AB and CD. But notice what it's done here. It hasn't kept track of num1. It's gotten rid of it. Troubleshoot, we like to see what that is. So here's what you're going to have to do to fix that. Let's kill the program here and go back. And what we're going to have to do to see these changes and not have our variables get disrupted is we have to put in the word volatile here for num1, num2, and the word volatile here for answer 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go and debug again, and let's see how this is going to turn out differently. Now volatile here means for any variable has to keep track of these so it doesn't lose it, because a lot of times what the system will do to make things more efficient is if it doesn't need num1, it's going to take the value that's in num1 and move it through one of its CP registers. And therefore, it's going to make the programming more efficient and the program a little bit smaller because RAM, where the variables sit, takes up memory and it tries to make sure it doesn't do that. But if we do this, it's going to force it to hold these values in these variables so we can see them as we're troubleshooting. Now, what we've done so far is we put a breakpoint down here and we don't need that anymore. So let's take that out of the F flush. And what we're going to do is we're going to put more breakpoints in here after the scan to see what's there. And then if we just run it, let's see what's going to happen now. So if we run it, we're going to type in AB. And right now we can see 171 there. And 171 is AB in decimal. And uh, if we hit our run button again, we're going to type in CD. And you can see this time that it's kept 171 here when we get to this point here. And if we trace ahead 
answer 1 is going to be 137. Trace ahead again. Answer 2 is 239. Notice answer 3 is some random value because it hasn't been initialized yet. And when we trace ahead one more time, these are the numbers that we got before. So if we want to see what's going on in variables, what we have to do is make them volatile so it doesn't try moving these numbers around in registers to make our program more efficient. 